Hello, my name is Dr. John Louie, and I'm an interventional radiologist at Stanford University. Today, I will be talking about chemoembolization. Chemoembolization is a targeted therapy for liver cancer. The most common liver cancer treated by chemoembolization is hepatocellular carcinoma, which is a primary tumor of the liver. Cancers that start elsewhere in the body and travel to the liver, such as neuroendocrine and metastasis, can also be treated by chemoembolization. The principles behind chemoembolization are really twofold. First, you're directing high levels of chemotherapeutic agents to the tumor itself, delivering higher concentrations than you could ever achieve from uh, an IV injection. Second is to cut off the blood supply to the tumor and essentially starve it to death. What are the benefits of chemoembolization? The goal of chemoembolization is to reduce the size and potentially the number of liver tumors that you may have. Although a cure from this uh, treatment is uncommon, approximately two-thirds of the patients uh, have good results. Good results meaning the tumors stop growing or they shrink in size. And this effect can last up to a year. Papers from Spain and Hong Kong also show that Patients have increased uh, survival benefits as well, depending upon the uh, tumor type. The procedure can be repeated several times during the year to keep the tumors in check, depending upon your liver and kidney functions. And uh, the function of the kidney and the liver will be monitored with uh, lab results. Who can be considered for this treatment? Well, uh, the candidates uh, for chemoembolization are uh, people with liver tumors that are primary or metastatic. The primary ones would be hepatocellular carcinoma and the metastatic tumors are usually neuroendocrine tumors. Uh, those are the uh, two common types of tumors uh, that we uh, treat. Um, usually these tumors are not resectable, meaning uh, they cannot be surgically removed. Uh, also patients who are on the transplant list if uh, the tumors become too large, uh, you may be taken off the uh, transplant list. So chemoembolization helps keep the tumors uh, in check, meaning the size small and the number small to keep you on the uh, transplant list. If you're not on the transplant list, uh, then these uh, tumors uh, may also be reduced in the number and the size in order for you to qualify to be on the transplant list. Um, most of the time, uh, chemoembolization is done to improve survival. Uh, if you're not on a transplant list or not a candidate for uh, resection, then chemoembolization is a great choice for extending life and improving quality of life. What are the side effects and risks involved with chemoembolization? I think there are primarily four uh, common side effects that most of my patients experience. Uh, some experience pain, especially in the right upper quadrant where your liver is, primarily because the tumor is dying. We have medicines to help you with the, uh, to get over the pain, which only lasts about one week, and it progressively gets better and better. Second is fatigue. Uh, a lot of my patients feel very tired uh, from chemoembolization, and I would not schedule anything that requires uh, demanding uh, time or concentration in the uh, one to two weeks following your treatment for chemoembolization. Third, uh, patients experience a poor appetite. Uh, although there are no uh, dietary restrictions, it's important to uh, maintain whatever restrictions that you have before the chemoembolization, such as a renal uh, diet or a diabetic diet. Fourth is uh, fever. Most of my patients also have low-grade fevers, up to 101. And this can last anywhere from uh, one to two weeks and can be easily treated with either Tylenol or ibuprofen. Fevers uh, greater than 101, uh, please give us a call uh, as this may be uh, suggesting a, an infection that will need to place you on antibiotics. A less common uh, side effects and risks uh, would be bleeding, infection, or worsening kidney or liver uh, function. Uh, Sometimes you have uh, systemic effects of the uh, chemo uh, treatment that we give, such as hair loss or bone marrow suppression. But all of these other uh, side effects and complications are far less common than the first four that I mentioned. 
uh, but it's something to keep in mind. What should I expect prior to the procedure? So the first thing to expect is a clinic visit. Uh, most of our patients come see us uh, in a, a pre-procedure clinic where we uh, will examine you, uh, review the imaging, and also uh, look over the uh, lab uh, tests. If you do not have a, a pre-procedure clinic, we'll draw labs uh, three days before the procedure or on the day of the procedure. So the night before the procedure, it's important to uh, be, most nurses will say MPO, meaning nothing by mouth. So no eating or drinking uh, before your procedure after midnight. What happens next once I've checked in with the nurses the day of the procedure? So after the nurse uh, starts the IV, you're brought to the angiography suite. Uh, we'll place a, a small puncture in the groin artery and travel up with a small tube called a catheter uh, to your liver. We will uh, produce images of your arteries by injecting contrast, contrast similar to what is given in CT scan. We'll see the arteries with the contrast by using our real-time x-ray machine called fluoroscopy. After we have mapped out the arteries and determined which blood vessel supplies your tumor, we will deliver the uh, chemoembolic uh, cocktail. The medicine includes uh, two types of chemotherapy, one called cisplatinum and the second one called uh, doxorubicin. The embolic agent, meaning to plug up your blood vessel, uh, is the ethiodol, and that essentially uh, blocks off the nutrient supply to the tumor and causes it to die and shrink. After we've given the uh, medicine, we'll close up the artery that we've uh, traveled through with uh, something called a closure device uh, or a star close, which is a small little uh, metal clip. That'll stay uh, permanently within you, but you won't feel it and it shouldn't set off any metal detectors at the airport. After uh, we've closed up the artery, you go to the post-recovery area where uh, the nurses will watch you for uh, any uh, discomfort and also make sure that you keep your legs straight for another uh, two hours. If we do not place a closing clip in the groin, you'll need to keep your legs straight for another six hours. You'll be admitted to the hospital overnight where we'll watch you for any signs and symptoms after the procedure, such what I mentioned before, uh, pain, um, nausea or vomiting, uh, or any uh, growing discomfort. We'll have medicines to treat you and to take care of these uh, side effects. After uh, an overnight stay at the hospital, one of our uh, staff members will come and see you to evaluate uh, how you're doing. If you are doing well and um, able to um, eat, uh, walk around, basically carry on the normal uh, activities of daily life, then you'll get to go home. Uh, the worst uh, side effects are after the procedure during that first night, so that's why we'd like to uh, watch overnight. But those uh, symptoms that you may or may not have will get progressively uh, better over the next uh, one to two weeks. If they don't get better or worsen, then uh, please give us a call at Interventional Radiology because we're uh, interested in any potential complications you may have or any uh, questions you may have as well. Um, please follow up with your hepatologist in the next uh, two weeks and uh, a follow up a CT scan or MRI scan will be performed approximately uh, three months uh, from the procedure to uh, evaluate the effects of the chemotherapeutic agents. What symptoms are abnormal and require doctor notification? Many patients who have chemobilizations uh, may be concerned about when to call interventional radiology when they return home. Uh, things to be concerned about uh, when you return home would be a high fever in excess of 101. If it's a below 101, you can take some Tylenol or uh, ibuprofen. However, do not combine your uh, Tylenol with your Vicodin as Vicodin already has a, a large amount of Tylenol within it. If you have a high uh, temperature, we'd be concerned about infection and we may have to see you in a clinic and prescribe some additional antibiotics. Uh, patients may also be concerned if there is a growing or large lump in the groin access uh, region. Uh, 
bleeding should not occur, but sometimes uh, the closure uh, is not adequate and a small lump can appear and grow. If that is a situation, then please give us a call as well as we would like to see you and evaluate uh, the access site as well. Other things to be concerned about would be uh, excessive nausea, vomiting, uh, where you were not able to tolerate uh, drinking or eating uh, for long periods of time. Dehydration uh, may be a concern, and if that were the uh, situation, we would need to admit you to the hospital to give you IV fluids and to give you medicines to help uh, stop the nausea and vomiting. Um, other things to be concerned about would be um, pain that is not well controlled with the uh, pills that we give you, the pain pip medication. If they're not adequate, uh, then we can prescribe you stronger medications. However, if the pain is persistent, then uh, we may be concerned and perform other uh, tests as well.